Hello, Christoph. Hello, how are you today? I'm doing well, and you? I'm fine. I didn't think you'd be coming to this class because you told me yesterday that you weren't interested in France. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it'll be an interesting class, regardless. You know my travel classes I have something redeeming. So we'll see who else comes today and take a trip, talk about plurals and quantifiers. Hello, Cheche. Good. Happy midnight. <laughs> How are you doing? Maybe she can't hear me. Hello? Can you hear me, Chacha? So we'll see if anyone else joins us and uh, see where we can travel today. Chacha, can you hear me? Yes. Ah, there you go. Welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, what am I hearing? I'm hearing a strange noise. It kind of sounds like a child. Yes, that's my niece. Ah. Does she live with you? Um uh, he. Uh, oh. sometimes he yes. If it's a if it's a he then it's a nephew. So in English, niece and nephew are your brothers or sisters children. So that means you're an aunt. Right? Yes. Okay, so you're an niece. Okay, I'm not an uncle yet. How come you're an aunt already? <laughs> I'm older than you. I should have. I should be an uncle by now. But I'm not. I have no nieces or nephews. Old uncle, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> old. <laughs> I'm not old. Um, well, maybe to some people. Um. What is your nephew doing up in midnight, though? Shouldn't he be in bed? Uh, he just he just crying. Mm -hmm. How old is he? One years old. Oh, okay. I see. Uh, okay, so uh, we're going to Christophe's favorite place today, France. <laughs> Specifically, the south of France, the Riviera, the French Riviera, which is the uh, the uh, the coasts, uh, the southern coast, and uh, we'll talk about plurals and quantifiers. We will talk about some vowel sounds. Um, hello, Rosa. Rosa? Can you hear me? Because I cannot hear you. Oh, it's, uh, let's see. I think somebody joined using the wrong Google account. And I think he's probably going to come back on his account. He probably doesn't want me calling him Rosa. I think that's what happened. We'll see. We'll find out. Uh, so we'll wait. Uh, we'll wait a couple minutes before before they come back. So what's new, everybody? Um, uh, while we wait for folks, let's talk about um, 
Um, uh, I want to ask how many countries you visited, but I think um, I think I know you guys well enough that I could probably uh, probably know. <laughs> so like, Chetje, you you haven't been outside of Indonesia yet, have you? No. Yeah. So but next month, of course. Yeah, it's been next month. So so right now you visited one country, your own country. <laughs> And, yes. Um, and Christoph? Yes, I have been to London, to Czech Republic, to uh, Austria, to Greece. So, if you include um, if you include Poland, then you've been to how many countries? Mm. Uh, Sounds like five. Dude. Five. Mm. Have you ever been to uh, Kaliningrad? No, I have never been in Russia. Because then you'd be in Russia, and that's close. Uh, I still find Kaliningrad to be... A I can't believe that it exists. I, I, I just realized that existed a year ago. I was looking at a map and I was blown away. I'm like, what? How is that part of Russia? I didn't understand. So, um, hello, Ken. Yes, hello. How are you? Hi, how are you today? This yes, I'm fine. <laughs> this evening, this late evening. Yes. Uh, 2 a.m. Uh, yeah, 2 a.m. <laughs> it, yeah. it is hot. Still, <laughs> unbelievably, yeah. Wow. Temperature still 30, 30 Celsius. 30, 30 Celsius, Celsius at, at 2 a.m. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, what's new with you, Ken? How was your weekend? Mm, I was at the beach, yeah, in this weekend. You were at the Last beach? Week. Yeah, week. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> It's hot. <laughs> yeah, uh, the warm. I know the sea water is like a warm bathtub. Oh wow! Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, like bath water. Yeah, that's what they say when the when if you go swimming and the water is very warm, you see it's like bath water. Wow. So, so even though it's hot, you can't. <laughs> it probably still feels nice to go swimming, even if it's warm. Yeah, I think so. Yes, I refreshed. So we were talking uh, before, um, we were talking about plurals and quantifiers, and I was just asking people how many countries they've been to, if, if you're lucky enough to have, been, to have traveled abroad. So how many how many countries have you been to, Ken? Uh, I've been to the United States only. Mm -hmm. So including Japan, two? Yeah, including Japan, yes. <laughs> two countries. <laughs> cool. But maybe more in the future. Yeah, I, I hope so. <laughs> Yes. Um, I think we might we might start pretty soon, but before we start, I'm going to read my write-up. It's probably not my write-up. I think I probably got this from the article. But savoring the south of France, the French Riviera, that picture-perfect stretch of beach-hugging Mediterranean coastline, looks just like a fabled playground of the rich and famous, with if an artist drew it, and many of the most renowned from Claude Monet to Henri Matisse certainly did. So, the south of France, the French Riviera, the Côte d'Ivoire, oh, no, the Côte d'Azur. <laughs> Côte d'Ivoire is a country in Africa, but the Côte, the Côte d'Azur is, uh, is the French Riviera. We're not going to Ivory Coast today, but we should. Um, excuse me. So, um, when uh, when talking about plurals, quantifiers, um, we use a lot of words like like many and much, any, some, these kind of words like this. And I want to talk a little bit about the vowels in there today. So, uh, um, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference uh, between the vowels of e uh, and uh, uh, and those are the so those are the words we're talking about. Let me 
I'm going to bring up. There we go. I'm going to bring up my, uh, my whiteboard here. My online whiteboard. Um, so, hello? Rosa? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Who is this? Uh, I'm not Rosa. I, I have... A, I have joined with another account from my wife. That's I'm okay. Rafael. <laughs> Hello, Rafael. Hello. No problem. <laughs> I'll make sure to call you Rafael for the rest of the, the day. <laughs> you can call me Rosa too. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing pretty well. I've been learning for a while in Kalingo. It's very interesting for me and. But uh, right now in my country, there is a lot of hot, it's, it's so warm, and that's the problem. But I have a, I condition it right now, and I know it's better for me. But I'm, mm -hmm. I'm doing pretty well. So um, I'm glad you mentioned. Um, um, so we're actually, in your sentence, you said something about, you said something about the weather. And we're talking about uh, quantifi uh, we're talking about um, quantifiers and plurals and things. And you're talking about heat. And um, he said there's a lot of hot, but you can't really say a lot of hot in English. What's a what's a better way to say that if um, if it's if there's a, if, uh, if it's hot weather? There's a couple it's ways so you can. Hmm. It's so warm. Yeah, so warm, very warm, or very hot, or it's quite hot. Uh, or you can say there's a lot of heat, but something is hot, and if you talk about um, quantity, you could say more or less heat. You can't say more or less hot. So, and we're going to be talking all about that today, about uh, about how to what words you can use more and many and much, and what what are what you can count and what you can't count. So that's what our whole class will be about today. Um, so uh, the two vowels I want to talk about before we get into the grammar part uh, is the e eh vowel, e, eh, which is like a short e, and then the short u vowel, the uh, like uh, and um, where it falls in the um, in these words we're going to be using. Um, All right. Let's see here. Okay. So, um, uh, yeah, and many and any, we use the S on. Many, any. It's not many, it's not many. It's eh, many. Uh, and we're talking about much or some, we use a. Uh. Much, some, a. Uh. Same vowel. So even though they're spelled differently, they have the same uh, vowel sound. So I'm going to type a couple of sentences up on here, and you can all read one. And try to pay, try to pay attention to the vowel sounds. Can you get the first one? Okay. Uh, I don't know many people who like reggae music. Good. Good. Good vowel sound. I don't know many people who like reggae music. Perfect. Perfect vowels. Good. Uh, Cheche. She doesn't have uh, any car insurance. Mm hmm Good. She doesn't have any car insurance. All right. Uh, that's illegal in the United States, by the way. You need to have car insurance. <laughs> All right. Good. Um, Christoph. Joe was hoping to win some money at bingo. Good. Um, 
So yeah, this is a, this is an interesting sentence because the O can be really tricky, but the O, and Joe, and hoping, and bingo, are all the the O sound. The O and two is like ooh or uh, depending on how you say it. And then the O and some is a third vowel, uh, some. What about this one? How do you is it is money? It, Yes, exactly. So these are both the same, some and money. Very good. Very good. Um, so one more. So uh, Rafael. That's the fourth one. Huh? Sorry. That's okay. Oh, I can't see it. You, I can see it. Oh, oh you yeah, can. right now. Okay. How much? How much does this cost? Mm -hmm. uh, so, I'm sorry. I say that one more time. It was kind of quiet. How much does this cost? Okay. How much does this? Okay. Good. So the uch. That's good. It's a good vowel. Um, I want to take a second to talk about. We're talking about the different o vowels. Uh, and this is another o vowel here. Um, and this is uh, simply an ah sound. Ah. I heard kind of a diphthong there, but it's just a uh, cost. 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 Yep. Good. So it rhymes with, it rhymes with, like boss, uh, or, or sauce. <laughs> All right. Um, excellent. Good vowel sounds. So we'll uh, we'll try to. We'll try to work on that. We'll try to apply that throughout our lesson today and try to remember to use the correct sound, eh and uh especially. We'll be focusing on that. And then we're going to talk about the grammar uh, rules and tips and notes of, um, of our grammar lesson today. And then we'll travel to the south of France. OK. So, let's take a look at this together and read through it. Um, Ken, will you start us off here? Okay. First, you should learn the regular plurals. There are some nouns that you don't uh, eat, eat, s or es to pluralize. Some are completely irregular. Man, men, woman, women, person, people, child, children. And with some, you change uh, the vowel sound to E sound. Tooth, teeth, foot, feet, goose, geese. There are others. You change the sound to from F to V. Life, lives, wife, wives, knife, knives. Other nouns don't change in the plural. Deer, deer. Sheep, sheep. Fish, fish. Mm -hmm. Good. Seems like a lot of animals, uh, they don't change. Um, excellent, thank you. Um, let's continue. Cheche? Second, can use many, much, and a lot of. Many is for count nouns, much is for non count, and a lot of is for both. There are many cars, so many houses, too many people, too much water, too much ice, so much food, not there is much water, ice, etc. There are a lot of cars and a lot of water. No, too many or much is for problems. So much and a lot of our casual ways to say very. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, yes. Uh, well, let's see. So much, a lot of, um, like, not just very, but very, like, I'm talking about quantity, very many, so much. So it's like saying very many, I guess. 
and really a lot of a lot of food, a lot of ice, uh, uh, so much ice, um, a lot of coins. So that would be more accurate. Very many, very many. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Let's continue, Christoph. Third, you can use some and any. These words both mean an uns unstated small number. How we use them is different. Some is usually used when the feeling is positive or neutral. I caught some fish today. I had some good luck. Any is usually used in negative sentences. I didn't catch any fish. Have you seen any good movies lately? Any is also used to make a polite request by making it sound less strong. Can I get you anything? Would you like any milk with your tea? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, okay. Let's uh, let's have uh, Rafael finish. Yeah. Fourth. You, uh, I I can see it. I can see. I can see the document because I. When you press on it, I I can see it, but right now I can't. Okay. I pass. Do you, do you I, right now, I right now I I see. Thank you. Okay. For you can pluralize. Some now count nouns. Some now count nouns mean almost the same as a count noun. Coffee, water, hair. I want two coffees. I want two cups of coffee. Plural, pluralize non count nouns to describe totally different types of them. Jewish metals, etc. Smoking, smoking can cause harm. The many harms of smoking. Two pieces of candy versus the store has a number of different candies. Three kinds of plastic versus the company makes a thousand different plastic. I can't say it anymore. Uh, that's about it. It's. Uh... This is a little note that says most non-count nouns are never pluralized, like information, equipment, jewelry. Um, so this is kind of a tricky one, this last part here. It's um, just because just because you can uh, you can pluralize some non-count nouns doesn't mean that means the same thing, right? So coffee typ typically is a non-count noun. You can't count coffee; it's a liquid. Or you know, even if it's a bag of coffee uh, beans, you still just you know it's just coffee, a lot of coffee. Um, so uh, when you say two coffees, especially when you say two beverages, anything, uh, it usually means a container of that beverage. It's an informal way of saying that. If you're at a cafe with your friends and you sort of come back and say, "I'm going to get a couple, uh, couple, I'm going to get some coffees for us uh, to go" or something. It means a cup of coffee or something like that. It also works with the water. If you say two waters, no, normally water is a non-count noun, right? You can't count water. But if you say two waters, then you obviously mean two like bottles of water or maybe a cup of water. So it's a, it, they, they mean different things. So if you say some two liquids, then it's probably a container of liquid, two beers to coax, whatever. So that's just a little note there. Um, same with down here, harm. Uh, smoking can cause, this would be more accurate or more illustrative, less, less illustrative <laughs> if it said can cause a lot. So a lot of harm is because it's a non-count noun. Uh, you could say the many harms. Um, it's talking about it's just a different way to use harm, so there, it kind of changes the meaning a little. So that one's that's a little trickier. All right, so that's that is uh, our grammar skill in a nutshell. Um, any questions about that before we go to France? 
Do you know the other example of uh, animals uh, which didn't change? Yeah, there's a, there's quite a few animals. Who knows some more animals that don't change the plural? What do they say here? They, what do they give us here? What, deer, sheep, fish. What else? Mm. Uh, uh, maybe caribou, <laughs> <laughs> um, bison. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Who, who can help me out here? What, there's some other. What are some other animals that don't change when you pluralize them? Uh, I know there's more. Hmm. Come on, anyone have any any guesses? Let's see. There's I don't know if there's more, but uh, I can't. But think uh, as I know, if uh, there are if there are a lot of fish, uh, people can also say school of fish. Mm -hmm. Yep, school of fish. That's plural fish. School of fish. Yeah, there's that's a whole other thing. Is is um, every animal has their own word for a group of that animal. Mm -hmm. A herd of um, cattle, which is cows. Uh, a herd of cattle. A school of fish. Uh, a flock of geese. Um, pride of lion. A pride of lions. A pride of right, yeah. Yes, a pride. So all these weird words that they have. There's there's some really strange ones. Um, but yeah. So but that's yeah, you can. That's just kind of a memorization thing. It's just if you use it, if you're going to go into zoology, or something, <laughs> or if you're going to be a veterinarian, or if you're going to be a biologist, maybe you would have to learn all those things. Or if you're just a big animal fan. You're, if you love animals, maybe. So, something to kind of a trivia thing that you can look at. Yeah. But not the most important thing when, when learning English. Okay, um, let's go to Grant. Kristoff's uh, favorite place. Really nice French people. Ten ways to live it up on the French Riviera. Uh, so we'll read the article and then maybe we'll come back and look at these photos. Okay. So. Uh, all right. I'll try to make it easy to see. Okay. Okay. Uh, the French Riviera. That picture-perfect stretch of beach-hugging Mediterranean coastline looks just like a fabled playground of the rich and famous would if an artist drew it. And many of the most renowned, from Claude Monet to Henri Matisse, certainly did. August is when many French residents escape their cities, towns, and villages and head out on holiday. But weather-wise, it's a great time to visit the Riviera, or Côte d'Azur, as the Riviera is called en français. But... So is the fall, the spring, even the so-called off-season after New Year's for those who prefer their crowds thin, traffic light, and prices less steep. Yes, I would prefer my crowds thin, traffic light, and prices less steep. Maybe I'll go there then. Uh, there's some good quantifier, less steep. Um, so talk about an embarrassment of riches. From the Italianate pastel charms of Menton and Nice to the sexy, sybaritic lure of Cannes and Saint-Tropez, the sun-splashed south of France has it all. Here are ten ways to savor it, no matter when you go. By the way, I was reading this, and I had never seen this word in my life, so I had to look it up because it was a new word for me. Um, this is like... A sub sybaritic means like people who like luxury, I think. Uh, yeah. If you love luxury, luxurious or sensuous pleasures, or yeah, if you like rich people, might be sybaritic if you like fancy, fancy, fancy things. So that was a new word for me as your vocabulary word for the day. <laughs> Number one go strolling in style. Just like a supermodel blessed with natural beauty and great bones, the Riviera loves to show itself off. 
So take advantage with any time strolls through these gorgeous seaside and hillside cities and towns. Nice's famous promenade des Anglais, a miles long stretch alongside pebbly beaches and dominated by the Belle Epoque era landmark hotel La Negresco, is one of uh, is one rewarding route, the jaw dropping allure of walk between Cote d'Azur villages, Villefranche sur Mer, and next door uh, Beaulieu sur Mer, uh, sur Mer is another. Party like a rock star. The Cote d'Azur is a perennial playground for A list celebrities such as Rihanna, um, uh, who in late July hit the streets of Saint Tropez in a bandeau bikini top and crochet crochet skirt. <laughs> uh, Academy Award winning actor Adrian Brody, Kanye West, and Kim Kardashian. Fancy. But you too can uh, roll just like the Jet Set. Do it in Cannes, uh, which is uh, May's annual film festival, anyway. Um, uh, Le Bali nightclub where Leonardo DiCaprio and Cameron Diaz have dropped in. Or at Saint-Tropez, eternally hot and long-queued club Les Caves du Roy, where the stars such as P. Diddy, George Clooney, and David and Victoria Beckham get the royal treatment. Um, any, uh, any, and guests staying on site at the five-star Hotel Biblo get to skip the lines. Mm, fancy. Um, unlike the giant casinos in Las Vegas, where gamblers amble in wearing shorts and flip-flops. <laughs> the grand ones in Monaco are more refined, even though men are required only to wear long pants and closed-toe shoes at the Casino de Monte Carlo. They can channel their inner James Bond and don jackets at night in the Salon Privé, where roulette, blackjack, and other games are played. Khan's massive Casino Croissette is one of several, including Nice's glitzy Casino Rue, uh, owned by the 100-year Lucien Barrier Group, which helped launch the modern-day resort concept by combining casinos, luxury hotels, and sports facilities on the same site. Both Rue and the casino inside the Art Deco-inspired Palais de Méditerranée have fabulous addresses facing the sea and the Promenade des Anglais. Soak up the scents. The south of France is home to some of uh, to some amazing smells, uh, thanks to the way high hillside towns of Grasse and Es, which send fragrances to the wood uh, to the world and explain perfume production to the masses. Grasse, about 26 miles west of Nice, home to the legends Fragonard, uh, whose 18th century factory is still open to the public, Molinar which also operates a, uh, a friendly and well-stocked store in central Nice, and Gallimard, another 18th century gem that offers free guided tours of its factory and museum 365 days a year. That's funny, I don't really know much about perfume, but all these factories rhyme. <laughs> Fragonard, Molinard, and Gallimard. <laughs> They're all different, but they all rhyme. Uh, take an artistic uh, approach. Great painters were obviously onto something when they settled along the Côte d'Azur. Inspired by its dazzling blue waters and skies and villages high in the sky, uh, those who called the stretch home and created world-class works that fill modern-day museums along the French Riviera include Pablo Picasso, whose former chateau turned museum in Antibes houses hundreds of its paintings, ceramics, and more. In Nice, there's Musée Matisse, perched on a hill in the, in the, that should say tiny, not my name, I think, right? The tiny Simier neighborhood, or maybe it's Tony, I, I, I don't know. If it's, uh, I've never heard of this word, so it must be tiny. Um, Simier neighborhood and housing a collection uh, the artist and his heirs left to the city. Musée National Marc Chagall, features the 19th century artist biblical themed works. Uh, in Saint Paul de Vence, you'll find Fondation Macht, Macht uh, a former, uh, excuse me, a modern art museum that pays homage to Chagall, Jean Miro, and Alberto Giacometti. Take in the scene. 
There is never a dull moment on the Côte d'Azur, with the year-round festivals keeping tourists and locals well entertained. Uh, of course, there's the Nice Jazz Festival, with national A-list headliners such as, uh, excuse me, each July, um, and with many performances staged in the ancient Roman amphitheater in Signe. The Top Flight and Jazz, uh, jazz Awan uh, Festival uh, follows just days later in lively and water sports friendly Juan Le Pin. Cannes lights up the sky each summer with the annual International Fireworks Festival, which started last month and continues August 7th, 15th, and the 24th. Also catch the Monte Carlo International Fireworks Festival each July and August with its competition happening August 8th and 25th. Hey, that's coming right up. If you feel a need for speed, the Grand Prix of Monaco races through this tiny principality's streets for several days each May. Dine like the locals. Cuisine in the south of France takes advantage of the Provençal region's rich natural bounty. You'll find colorful ratatouille, a side dish made from tomatoes, eggplant, onions, peppers, and zucchini, Bouillabaisse, the famed seafood soup from the port city of Marseille, served with a creamy garlic sauce, and soca, a chickpea and olive oil pancake sold by vendors in Nice and beyond. Hmm. And because Nice belonged to Italy until 1860, Italian cuisine feels about as local as salad niçoise. You'll dine fabulously across the Côte d'Azur, but the tiny Olivier in Vieux, Nice, does more than serve delicious dishes. Multilingual owner Nadim Beruti uses his seasonal cuisine as a showcase for the small producer of Provençal olive oils he sells. You'll want to take home some bottles of this liquid gold to use back home and give as gifts. Oh, there he is. That's his uh, olive oils. Savor sundown. The French Riviera may be all about sun-splashed days, but the good times keep rolling at night. The mild climate lets folks dine and sip aperitifs outdoors most of the year, with terrace tables and at cafes and restaurants such as Vichonche, always popular Le Cosmo, uh, and those along uh, town... I don't know this word, Kai, Kai, must be... I don't know what that means. Uh, occupied even in cooler months. And from late June through early September, take in a current, usually English-language film, Once the Sun Sets at the Monaco Open Air Cinema. Talk about a stunning backdrop to the action. Uh, the cinema's perched on the Rock of Monaco, overlooking the sea and with spectacular views of the Prince, Prince's Palace and Old Town. Even Hollywood can stage a scene like this. Sleep well. Choices, around, uh, choices abound when cooling your heels after long days and nights on the Riviera. High rollers choose the, ce the celeb-favored Hotel du Cap et d'un Roc and the, cap and the southern tip of Cap d'Antide uh, or the intercontinental Carlton Khan on the La Croissette waterfront promenade. If you're looking for stunning sea views, balconies, and a more laid-back artistic vibe, the 35-room Hotel Welcome in Villefranche sur Mer is a great bet. Uh, writer, artist, filmmaker Jean Cocteau used to stay here and painted the interior of the 14th century Chapelle Saint Pierre across the street. Get more space by renting one of uh, the seven stylishly furnished flats uh, from Riviera Experience, which offers personalized service and uh, every home comfort you might need. Get around in style. No matter how you arrive or depart the Côte d'Azur, you'll be treated to world-class views. Take the high-speed TGV uh, to or from Paris, from the regional trains from nearby Ventimiglia, Italy, uh, and gaze at mile after gorgeous mile of Mediterranean beaches. Fly into or out of Nice, one of France's three busiest airports, and drool at the scenery you'll see from the air. Since the Riviera is home to the annual Grand Prix, consider checking out the landscape uh, on your own wheels, zipping along the three corniches 
I don't know that word either, are winding <laughs> roads that stretch between Nice and Menton. Regional buses also travel many of these stunning roads. And if you're partial to the sea, use seasonal April-October ferries between Nice and Monaco, Caen and Saint-Tropez for breathtaking sights you won't soon forget. Uh, okay, so check out a couple of pictures here. Gotta, get, gotta have some pictures if we're gonna travel. Gotta see a picture. Sunbathers gather en masse during... Okay, here's an example of French that happens in in English. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I pronounced it French, but I should be pronouncing this English version. So this is now an English term, but it's totally French. Sunbathers gather en masse during the summer. Uh, that means... Does anyone know what that means? When you say en masse? This is an English term, but it's it's stolen directly from the French language, and but we use it in in English. It's uh, like Christophe and I were talking about all the French that you find in English, mm, like no. it's it's like a, like bundle. Bunk. Say that again. Bunk, bulk, bundle. <laughs> yeah, in bulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like gather in big groups. Exactly. Yes. En masse is like in, in mass. It, it, it translates exactly to something like massive. <laughs> massive, yeah, yeah. It's the same same cognate, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, right. I'm just gonna just make sure, but it's, it basically just means in big groups. Uh, so. Uh, or overwhelmingly even. Okay, so uh, during the summer on the beach along Nice's Promenade Anglais, a wide boulevard and pedestrian walkway along the Mediterranean. All right. Night time's also the right time to experience Nice. La Nefresco, Nice's Grand Dame Hotel and a Belle Epoque era landmark dominates the promenade's landscape. Very nice. Nice is nice, right? <laughs> The Cour Salea outdoor flower and food market operates in the heart of Old Nice Tuesdays through Sundays. Colorful buildings, cafes, and restaurants line the narrow square. Nice. There's no shortage of fine art in the south of France, where many artists find inspiration. In Nice, there's a museum dedicated to Russian painter Marc Chagall. Oh, I didn't realize he was Russian. I thought he was French. I just learned something new. Uh, international stars come out to play each May in Cannes for the Riviera Town's famed film festival. Steps from the seaside views, restaurants, and shops uh, line the narrow streets. There's Cannes. Oh, that's a beautiful little medieval-style town, it looks like. That'd be awesome. All right. Uh, sur mer Colorful buildings provide a sun-splashed backdrop for restaurants along Vifrance Sumer's lively quai. What is quai? I keep talking. Or is it K? Hi. What does that mean? Uh, oh. Um, oh, it's a wharf. Or a K. Hmm. Wow, look how colorful those buildings are. Hmm. Um, it's. It comes with a French word, hmm. but it's pronounced like K. Interesting. I've just never seen that word before. The, the Côte d'Azur's mild climate allows for outdoor dining and aperitif sipping most of the year. That's awesome. Look at those colors. Provençal uh, waterfront penthouse, one of seven Villefranche sur mers apartments available for rent through the Riviera Experience, offers unobstructed views of the Bay of Villefranche. Um, roll the dice in high style along with true players at the Casino Monte Carlo in Monaco, a principality bordered by France on three sides. Wow, that would be cool to go to Monaco. Uh, as if its natural beauty weren't stunning enough, Monte Carlo, the business and residential district within the principality of Monaco, boasts an impressive skyline and yachts for days. Look at all those yachts. A lot of money there. 
For several days, each May, the Grand Prix races through the streets of Monaco. All right, so um, that was uh, kind of a long trip through the south of France, but I wanted to go through all those photos too, so you kind of get a feel for it. Any uh, comments or questions about that article? I guess this is the one of the, the one of location for Mr. Bean Holiday movie. Oh, for who? Maybe, but I don't know. For who? Mr. Bean Holiday. Mr. Bean Holiday. No, oh, yeah, I've I've seen that film. Yeah, really? it could be South France. Does he go to Nice? Yes. Yeah. I guess so. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Hmm. I didn't know that. So, um, but yeah. How does the French sound like in English? Would, this article, a lot of French is used, or French related English is used in this article. Yeah, well, the, is it posh or kind of fashionable or exotic? <laughs> I mean, if somebody talks in, in the French language to, uh, to Americans, a lot of times it sounds like um, like snobby, maybe. Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of like the way British people sound to Americans. So it's it's all different cultures. So like to an American, if someone speaks with a British accent, it sounds fancy or rich or snobby or arrogant. Same with French. If someone speaks with a French mm -hmm. accent, they sound like they're being arrogant. So mm -hmm. if they say if they use the French accent or a British accent, it sounds ooh, they're trying to be all fancy. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I was trying to only pronounce. The the words in you know in French, I was trying to pronounce them in the French way, but then there's also American words or English words that came from French. Mm -hmm. So there's something about pronouncing things. You know, like uh, I was in, we're talking about proper nouns, and in proper nouns. There's different ways to pronounce them, different words in different countries. So, for instance, the word for Paris, uh, the, 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 the capital of France is Paris, right? In English, we call it Paris. Mm -hmm. It's spelled exactly the same way in French, but it's pronounced a completely different way. Mm -hmm. So, if I said, um, oh, I'm going to Paris tomorrow, they'd be like, oh, what? <laughs> like, uh, mm -hmm. Because it's like, why do you have to pronounce it like that? And it's like, so it's actually correct to pronounce it the American way. So I'm going to Paris tomorrow. Even if you can speak French, even if you can pronounce it okay, it's not. It's stupid to switch uh, to switch languages in the middle of a of of a sentence. It kind of looks like you're showing off. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I don't know how to pronounce a lot of those words in English, like vie franche. I don't know how to how do you pronounce that in in uh, in English. So I've never seen that word before. So I had to pronounce it in the French way because I don't know how to pronounce that in English. So. Um, I guess okay. everyone uh, have have their own pronouns to call city or country. <laughs> right, like how do you pronounce Paris in your language? Paris. Paris. And, and what about so? Is it Paris for you, Christoph? Yes, it's Paris. Paris. So it's different for everyone. And what about you, Ken? How do you pronounce the capital of France? Paris. Pari. Pari. Pari in, in Japanese. So we all have slightly different... They're all almost exactly the same. And they're all probably spelled almost exactly the same or exactly the same, but they all have a different pronunciation. And so... And that's the interesting thing about proper nouns. But uh, Japanese use different letters, not alphabet, actually. Right, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. True. So usually, Japanese try to pronounce the local, you know, that, that country's accent. You know. Yeah, yours Pari, is... Pari, S-drop, so... Pahui, time to be paddy. <laughs> yeah, yours is. Yeah, yours, your pronunciation is the closest to the real one. That's true of all of ours. Uh, because I took a French class of it <laughs> before. You took French? Yeah, a, a little. Oh. <laughs> I don't speak French much. Yeah, yeah. I don't really speak much French. Um, so, uh, why might it be better to visit the French Riviera in the off season? You guys remember about the, the off season? Why might it be better? They talk about the different times of the year to go there. Um, why do you think it might be better to visit 
uh, French Riviera uh, in the off season, which is after New Year's. You guys remember? Have any ideas? It's good for your pocket. Good for your pocket. Why? <laughs> uh, if you don't want to spend a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> the prices are a little cheaper. It's less popular to go than at that time, so things get a little bit cheaper. That's that's one. Best stuff. Best of don't interest to visit Paris. <laughs> no. No, Monaco. Monaco. <laughs> You'd be interested in Monaco? Uh, I would like to try. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not France. <laughs> so if you all went all the way to Monaco, you wouldn't even like travel like a little bit to see Nice, to see the French Riviera. You wouldn't even want to, your, you even want to put your feet on the ground of France. You're like you might. You might turn into a Frenchman or something. It's uh, okay. You're welcome in Indonesia, Christoph. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's other reasons why to go in the off season. Uh, it's cheaper. What are some other reasons that you might want to go in the winter time? Mm, it's warm. Temperature. Temperature. Okay. Yeah, it's cooler. Mm, and maybe, maybe sunnier than North North France. Sunnier? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, compared with Paris. It's, Paris. I think it's yeah, I think it's always sunnier all year round. I think in mm -hmm. general, I think it's sunnier. More sun, right? What do we say? More sun or more sun? Yeah. Many sun mm -hmm. or more sunnier. Sun? Sunnier is a straight, <laughs> wrong word. No, you can sun. say. Okay. okay. Yeah, you okay. can say so. I'm just I'm trying to use our, our uh, grammar skills today. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what about uh, tourists, people, more or less? More, yeah. maybe. Well, there's more tourists in the south of France than there are in other parts of the world. But during the off season, we have they have less tourists, which is another reason because it's not as popular. Mm. Um, uh, we are really late on time because I spent too much time yapping. That's I heard France is the top top destination for tourism. Really? Yes. Hmm. I didn't know that. I've never. The first top destination. For everybody in the world, or for like Americans, or for Europeans, or. For everybody. Really. Hmm. Yes. No, I didn't know that. I I, I know it's it's always one maybe of... because. Maybe because they're able to our... <laughs> Maybe. Uh, there's so many things to see. It's always one of the top destinations, like Italy, France, England, Spain. Western Europe are, is always a popular travel destination. Germany, all these places are really popular travel destinations for people. The United world. States is the second. Oh, yeah, 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 United States. Yeah. China is third, I guess, yeah. I, yeah. As a you know, one class shows a chart of the two top tourist destination charts. So, mm -hmm. France, America, maybe third China. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, interesting. All good places. They're all good places. Okay. We. Um. I am almost time, but I, I need to do a really really fast assessment, and then we'll be done with class. So. Um, uh, I'm gonna, just going just gonna to say a word, and I want you to pluralize it. That's all. So uh, we'll start with Ken. Mm -hmm. um, man. Men. Men, yes. Uh, good. Uh, Cheche. Yes. Uh, sheep. Sheep. Yes. Sheep. <laughs> That's correct. Um, and Christoph. Iguana. Iguana. Uh, actually, I think it's iguanas. <laughs> That's a hard one. Yes, it's... with S. Yeah, you actually pluralize that one. I mean, you add an S to that one, I think. Iguanas. Iguana. Yeah, there's many iguanas. I gave you a hard one, though, because we don't normally talk about iguanas in, this, in these classes. But... 
I was going to say something like dog, but that'd be too easy. <laughs> so we learned something new. Um, I learned a lot. How about new. French? <laughs> what? How about French? Yeah, good. Who can? Who? who how? What's the plural of French? How do you? How can you pluralize French? Or how can you say? What do we say there? Is that countable or non-countable? Uh, con country is usually non-countable, I guess. Well, it's not a country. It's a denonym. So French, not France, but French. So. Um, ah, yeah, French. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, French you're right. Yeah. 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 Um, mm. uh, definitely non-countable. Yeah. You can say more French. Uh, Anthony spoke more French in this class than normal. <laughs> Not many or lots of. You can say lots of French, but uh, more. I've seen. I've seen two French. Is it acceptable? No, you can't count it. Um, if you want to say French people, you can say French people. Or French. Yes, French people. Uh, there's five Frenchmen over there in the bakery, or five French ladies in the cafe over there, but you can't say five French. It doesn't work. It never works. Uh, you can't say, well, it does if it has an S at the end. So you could say five Russians. Hmm. So, um, or five Spaniards. But I've never heard five Japanese. No, you can't say, you can't. <laughs> you can't. There's uh, five Japanese people. If you put an S mm. on it, then you can say it. So you can say five Spaniards, but you can't say five Spanish. You can say... Yeah, interesting. I never thought about it, but that's true. You can say, only if it has an S, can you count it? That's strange. Hmm. I can say 10 Americans, but uh, you can't say 10 English. It's just a rule, I guess. All right, we're out of time, very much out of time. I have a lot of classes today. I have an extra class, too, if you're interested. Um, and so, thanks, everyone. Good job. My next class is the world's weirdest exotic fruits, my food class. So join me. It'll be fun. Um, or if you're going to bed, like Ken might be going to bed. So anyway, have a good one. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care.